Are we, Hi. Are we live? <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're here. Oh boy. We're back in the office. The uh, audio is probably not as good. We're both on the same camera. We're sitting right next to each other. Look, I'm touching her. And that beard oil smells really good. Mm. He got a new beard oil. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you can hear us. I mean, you know, this is, uh, this is not started out to be a good evening. Uh, sound and video is good. Thank you, Sparrow's Fish. Captain Jack Sparrow is in there in the chat tonight. Oh, wow. So listen, um, <laughs> eight minutes ago, we were in the fish house. And eight minutes ago, I told her, uh, this isn't going to work. After I dragged everything out there. And we had to rush over here, grab another camera, put it up. It's sitting... <laughs> if you saw how this was set up right now, it we would be humiliated. It'd be embarrassing. But, uh, but here we are. And because we're sharing a microphone, which is right here, uh, I'm going to be speaking louder than I normally do and it's really gonna bother me after a while but we're here so yay you know I'm happy that we're here so <laughs> I keep looking at that instead of the camera <laughs> yeah it's this is all so this confusing. Is so weird uh, fish sanity it's Finn 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 sanity my bad I like that better than fish sanity uh, and um, Luxurious bastards. That's who you. That's who you get your beard oil th from. That's where you go. Uh, I got a whole bunch of it today, and um, smells good. Pretty excited about it. Uh, so, <laughs> the most unorganized live stream we've ever done. But you know what? If there's going to be technical issues, it's going to be not her, but me that has them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, you know, today we're going to be here. Next week, who knows? But mm -hmm. I was really excited to be out in the fish house tonight to show you something you may have been able to see, but most likely not. We have breeding happening like crazy. You weren't even supposed to bring that up yet. Why? Because it was, it was number four. Oh. It was... It was comment number four. Well, my, okay. Well, here we are. Like I, like we said several weeks ago, when she brings comments to the table here, to for me to react to, I've never heard them. I didn't know she was going to talk about that. It's okay. Uh, she discovered them this week, and the cool thing is, it's not just fry. It's multiple yeah. generation, not Different generations, sizes. but multiple spawns of fry because there's some that are like an inch and some that are just 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 barely alive like just mm -hmm. brand new so it's really 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 cool i would suggest showing the video but we know what happens when you do that so let's yeah i won't be doing that i showed zen she knows i won't be doing that today but she also mm -hmm. people used to get mad at me when i would refer to you as she and her i don't understand why that is but mm -hmm. Uh, she's sitting right next to me, and I'm talking about her. So she me. also found Fry finally Yay. in the yellow lab tank. Yep. Um, and that was a surprise. But I love that thumbnail right there. You can't see it from where you're at. It's a little girl flicking off. Aww. Yin Yang. That's cute. Uh, what was what? I saying? <laughs> the reason why <laughs> that's happening is because... I told you in that video, I, the titles were, I built the perfect environment for my African cichlids. And I did. You want to know why I know that? Because they're breeding like crazy in there. And the fry are there. The, tonight, when I went out there to set up all of this, to only then bring everything into here, mm -hmm. uh, they were everywhere around the rocks. I know. They're so cute. There's got to be 40 of them. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. Yeah. Yellow Labs, we've only seen one. I've only seen one. I don't know I how saw, many you saw. I saw one yesterday, and I didn't see it today in its little spot. So, But there's so many places that the fish could be that we wouldn't be able to see it. 
I mean, I, back behind true. the rocks, underneath, you know, wherever. The one that we saw was like underneath one of the rocks. Yeah, it was so cute. Like under, it was almost like it was under a, le- a ledge. It was where the substrate was and a rock kind of over the substrate and there was like that much space so an adult <laughs> couldn't get underneath of there and get it so it's so much fun and you know what it, it wouldn't have happened had i not i'm not trying to act like i'm a hero here but had i not made those changes to the tank to provide areas and, and feed extreme fish foods well i do that too uh i mean i've always done that even I, when they weren't breeding i was doing that but it's a great food, so you should feed yeah, it to yeah. your fish, too. But uh, giving them an environment to where they can spawn, but not only that, they can have somewhere to release the fry, and they don't get immediately swooped up by some other fish. And this guy right here, he was like, so, um, I don't know, maybe, what do you say? it'd probably be a little too hard to try to get them all out, and, you know, because of the rocks, and I'm like, John. We're not breeding African cichlids anymore. (laughs) Nature. Just let nature take its course. Let them do their thing. Let's not get too crazily attached and be those people again. (laughs) You know what? It's one of those things where some of them are not going to, they're not going to make it. And it's because they're going to come out to get food. And uh, the big Fusco or one of the big Borley eye is going to see it and go, oh, that looks tasty. But that's why I've been taking like, you know, you put in the big fella in there for him and I sprinkle in the um the nano and I do it on one side I was and wondering I, why that can was out there yeah <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure they get food so yeah that's that's super exciting um we we knew this was probably going to happen in the yellow lab tank um because you know we did not discriminate between males and females mm-hmm. in that tank the peacock and hap tank we tried to get all males in there so if breeding were to happen, that would be a little weird. Um, but we go against science. But unfortunately, you know, we, we've we purchased some fish that were, uh, that were not, not from places we should have purchased fish from. Yeah, but they, they fooled us. The fish, not the people. Yeah, the, they, they did. These fish did not come from a place that you would find online like yeah, Imperial Tropicals like or that. Cichlid Shack or Live Fish Director. It wasn't anything like that. Um, we, we actually bought them from a fish wholesaler. And, uh, you know, some of the females were, were dressed up like males when we bought them. And it is what it is. You yeah. get that. And uh, I was not, I'm not mad about it. It is. It, it just We're getting you know, free babies. Yeah, there's babies in there. We'll see if they survive. If they do, that's great. We get some free fish, and we never have to buy fish for that tank again. Well, I mean, look at the African cichlid tank in Aquariums Unlimited. There's all kinds of size fish in there. They're everywhere, and they're surviving. Including the largest imbunas I've ever seen oh, in my they're life. They're huge. I've never seen imbunas the size that he has them in that tank. I mean, we're talking about like nine inch in bonus it's crazy i don't know what he's doing with those fish giving them like liver king's supplements or something but they have absolutely <laughs> blown huge. up they're huge and uh so yeah that's very very cool I'm, I'm excited about it it's fun it's a little scary every single day you go in there and you're like i hope they're still there because well my the, the worst nightmare for me would be feeding them and then looking down, watching one of watch, them. <laughs> watching the babies, and then one of the adults eating it. That would bother me. <laughs> I'd rather it happen when, when I'm not even in the fish room. So, But you know, there's also this. We have been fortunate enough to be in the fish room of the Adams family. No, not Morticia and Gomez, but uh, Jason and Joanna. And they had not only a community tank with their Africans breeding in it, but there were Oscars in that tank mm, and yeah. there were fry this big. Yep. And and I said to him, hey, listen, I've been doing this for a long time and I would never entertain that. And he says, well, first of all, I didn't do this on purpose. It just kind of <laughs> happened. And second of all, if you keep the Oscars happy and mm. fed, 
They yeah. don't have any reason. Yeah. And I said, you know, that makes an awful lot of sense. Um, now that he, he no longer has those fish and they're obviously no longer together, but it was pretty interesting to see that. Uh, there are no guarantees whatsoever that if you have baby fish in the tank and you keep your adult fish happy and, and full, that they're not going to eat the fry. These are opportunistic animals that uh, they do not care, even if it is their own yeah, they don't care. They just they'll they'll just scoop it right up. Whoa! So wow. You but all that's right? yeah. I'm, I'm gonna make I it. I mean, what a stream! You guys are getting it like <laughs> you're just getting it live. <laughs> no filter here. I do this every week. They know. They know I'm a I'm a burper while I'm trying to talk. I I don't know why that happens, but uh, so yeah, wanted to to tell you all about that. That's exciting. We do have a planned topic for today. Yeah. And uh, and we're going to, you know what, let me read these real quick and then we'll get into that because, you know, we don't want the entire end of the stream to be dominated no, by this. No. Uh, Melissa Jaswald, thank you so much for that? remembering Jack's last week. Mm -hmm. He was indeed my baby boy. Nice. Uh, and then came in again and said, thank you, John and Lisa, for your kindness and love uh, to all my fish family. What great support. I hope your week is getting better. I know it's tough. I, uh, I, I. I would say her relationship with Jax is like Skylar's relationship with uh, Pluto and Kenzie's with Roxy. It's like it I dread when that day comes for any of them. Uh, it's not going to be for a long time, but I definitely feel for you, Melissa, because uh, that's the worst, especially after 19 years. Yeah. Hope Mud Jones says, hey, John and Lisa, long time. Hey. It has been a long time. I haven't seen you in here. She's going to be a mama soon. Again. Again. Nice. She makes some really cute babies. Yeah, so she does. that's Jen's adorable. That's going to be uh, a success, I'm sure. Uh, and then Finn Sanity with the uh, asking or uh, need new beard oil. Uh, I'm telling you, look up Luxurious Bastard. I know the name is like, isn't that a Quentin Tarantino movie? But just trust me. I don't like saying that word on my live stream. But uh, but that guy's doing it right. And it's a small business like ours. And I really love being able to support businesses like that. And, uh, you know, good prices. Great, great stuff. I got like six different scents. And I love every single one of them. <laughs> I don't know which one is my favorite. Uh, if you go on that site and you're looking around, it's 1912. That's the scent that uh, she likes so much that I have on right now. It smells super yummy. Mm -hmm. Thursday nights. Woo woo. Oblivious uh, oblivious slime gaming. That was an interesting one to say, but I got it for next time. Welcome to the team became a member. Uh it actually re-upped because the the square is orange. Uh Christopher Hill, it's all good, it works. Yeah, I hope so, cause uh we're here. What was that noise? That was my feet kicking my shoe. Uh Finsanity Aquanics. AKA Joe Provenzano. I oh. thought the um, I thought the avatar looked familiar. Joe had an interesting story yesterday for me that I would be interested to know how it turned out. Uh, it was a scenario that I've never heard of before. Huh. He had aquariums spontaneously filling with water. More than one? Well, was, I think it was just one. Oh, okay. And that was a unique scenario that I've never heard of before. And I didn't really have a lot, whole lot of advice for him because I'm like, ah. Wouldn't the water be coming like out of the sump, but just not going back in it? I don't think the, I don't think it's on a sump. Oh. Uh, I mean, I told him, listen, the only logical explanation for something like that is to walk up to the tank and look up. Because water's coming from somewhere. Oh. And <laughs> whether it's a plumbing pipe in the, you know, leaking something, I don't know, a roof leak, there's water coming from somewhere. And uh, I'd be curious to know where that's coming from. Uh, Travis Breckenridge, I think that's the next one. Yep. Uh, love you guys and all the awesome videos. Keep up the amazing work. Have an amazing week. Much love. Well, thank you so much for that. Much love back to you. Melanie DC, Lisa, need a plant of the day soon. Wow, a year. I got you. I got you. I've got three. She, she brought them out 
to the uh, I know it's Inglorious Bastards, the Quentin Tino, Tarantino movie. The name of the company sounds similar to that. I know. We were talking about plants. Who was that? I got to yell at that person. Who was it? Come on. The, uh, John Lieber, don't you dare, dare question my knowledge of Quentin Tarantino movies. Don't nobody know more about Quentin Tarantino movies than me. Don't you go there. I, <laughs> but it sounds similar. Anyway. Uh, plants. Yeah, she's got <laughs> she's got uh, she's got a plant here for you that she carried out to the fish house, and I had to tell her to turn them around and come back in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right, uh, a couple more of these real quick. Scott Orr became a member, brand new member. Welcome, Welcome to the team. Hope Mud Jones again. Lisa, hi there. <laughs> Wanted to make sure you saw that she said hi. <laughs> Oblivious Slime Gaming again. What kind of wood should I get for my 55 gallon? Uh, Malaysian driftwood, because it's the uh, best. Hmm. What? I mean, there's so many different kinds of woods. Malaysian driftwood is the easiest to find. It is the most affordable. I like eucalyptus. To me, that's my favorite. I do too. Not as easy to find. I don't know anybody that sells it other than us, and, other than us, and we're out of it right now, so... Oh. Shouldn't really suggest. I'm that. not out of it. I have some hidden. <laughs> she keeps a secret stash. Yes. All right. Uh, topic today. Our fish store is ripping us off. It only took me 18 minutes to get to it. Whoa. We should like document that in the <laughs> one thing. It starts in 18 minutes because somebody's going to comment that he finally gets on topic at 18 minutes. They like to do that. Uh, they've been doing that ever since we started YouTube. Yeah. And that's because I run my mouth unnecessarily a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that yellow? This is what I talk about all the time that drives me crazy. Well, ignore it. So what I do is I, I do this. <laughs> see? Now I can't see it. Yeah. The warning from uh, YouTube saying, hey, we're not getting enough signal from you. Are fish stores ripping you off? Uh, this came from a comment. And it wasn't to be rude. I mean, it was just a comment. It's a, it was well, a comment. I'm not going to say who it was. It doesn't matter. It's, it's actually something that's very common. We've seen it before. Yeah, people say it a lot, which is why I don't want to single out the person that right. we saw say this. Um, and it wasn't even said to us. It was said on, somewhere on Facebook, you said, wasn't it? Um, it doesn't really matter. This is something that is a topic that a lot of people talk about. It's a controversial topic all over our community. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go deep with this, Ooh. if you'll allow me. So does that mean I need to shut up? No. you. I mean, you have lived this life for the last 10 years, too, so you can certainly contribute. Yeah, we used but, to have a fish store, so. Yeah. So the, the, the question is not about uh, dry goods and fish foods and things like that. It is, do fish stores rip you off on fish? Because the comment is, and, and like I said, I've seen this a lot of times. You know, I've talked to breeders. I've talked to fish farms. And they charge $5 a fish. But then when I go to the fish store, the fish store's charging $25 per fish. And I'm sure they're making their head go back and forth when they type that in too. Uh, because it's one of those... I got beard oil on my hands. I can't snap, but um, it's one of those things like, you know, they charge too much. And mm. there are a lot of reasons why that is. But before I get into why that is, I want to talk about options that these people put out there as alternatives to buying from the fish store. First of all, there's no better alternative to buy fish than fish stores. Except clubs. If you're at an auction and you're getting, you know what I no, mean. No, listen. If there's no fish stores, there's no fish clubs. If there's no fish stores, there's no aquashellas. There's no tanked on TV, even though it hasn't been on in 10 years. But you know there's no, mean. there's none of this happens without fish stores. I agree. So I am the owner and co-owner with her of a retail establishment that sells fish keeping supplies and live fish. And I'm telling you right now, 
go to fish stores and buy fish, period. I mean, the reason why people come to us is because they're going to be able to pick the fish that they want. They know that their fish is being kept in better conditions than they are at their local pet store because their local pet store probably has them in cups. And so that's why people buy from us. So I'm not trying to make a sales pitch for us. I'm mm -hmm. trying to tell you if you're going to your local fish store and you're seeing fish there, don't think that there's a better alternative that's going to save you money. And I'm going to tell you why. We're going to go through this. And then I'm going to tell you why fish stores charge what they do for fish. And you can chime in anytime you want. Oh, I've got a lot to say. Good. What are your alternatives? If you've just decided, you know what? The owner of my fish store is a jerk. The only other one even close to me is two hours away. And yeah, maybe I'll go there on special occasions. But when I just want a fish, I want to get the cheapest price possible. I got to tell you something, folks. We live in a we live in a world, our little world of keeping glass boxes full of water where we are responsible for lives. There's nothing I'm sorry to say this because I'm not a rich man. It's not like I have the freedom to just be frivolous with money. But I hate seeing people in social media talking about how do I do this thing for on with fish keeping for the cheapest. My answer to those people it is listen i understand uh, we have been in a place where we thought we were going to get kicked out of our house before i mean it, we've been in dark times financially so i understand not having the extra money to go out and spend 25 dollars on a fish wait till you can that's the answer that's the way you do it cheap because in the end you're going to save up your money you're going to do it right and you're not going to have that that burden uh, and you're going to enjoy the process that much more. And as you're saving up, whether it's $5 a week or whatever it is that you can save up for it, picking quarters out from underneath the couch, when you do get it and you do go to the fish store, it makes it that much more special. Trust me, yep. we've been there. Oh, yeah. We've been there not too long ago. We were there. So, yes, be patient. Don't use the word cheap. And, and do what you got to do. And it, however long it takes to do what you got to do, that's how long you should wait to do it. But if you're one of those people that just says, you know what, fish stores are ripping me off because I've talked to these fish farms and I know they only charge $5 a fish and my fish store for the same price is charging $25. So I'm going to buy it from the a breeder or a farm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got a couple options there. Uh, first, if you are going to import fish, uh, the first thing I would say to you is good luck. Uh, good luck saving money importing fish. Yeah. If somebody's on eBay or somebody's on wh wherever they are and they're saying, we are in Indonesia and we will ship you fish for $5, what do you think that fish is going to look like when it gets to you? If it even gets to you, you might get a box of rocks. You might get a box with bags in it that are empty. You just don't know what you're getting. So what you do is you say, well, I'm going to go to a, uh, a a website and I'm going to find a reputable farm in, let's just say, Indonesia. We deal with people in Indonesia. We deal with people in Thailand. Uh, we This is what we do for a living. So we know pretty well how this works. You're going to call these people in, in Thailand. Let's say Thailand, because that's the last farm we bought from. Uh, Right? Yeah, it was Thailand. Mm -hmm. So here come the excuses. How dare you? What am I making excuses for? I don't own a fish store. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. Because we're not talking specifically betas here. We're talking any fish. We're talking about the fish keeping hobby, period. So first thing's going to... There's only a couple of things that can happen if you contact a fish farm in Indonesia and say, I want to order one fish. They're going to tell you in a way that's going to come across as rude, but it's not rude because it's just the language barrier and it's, you know, translation, text and all of this kind of stuff. They're going to tell you, um, we don't, we're not going to ship just one fish to the United States from here because that's ridiculous. We're not going to do that. If you find somebody that can do that, all right, fine. Do you really think you're going to get a fish imported from Indonesia to the United States and not spend $25? Do you really think that's not going to happen? 
what you're going to end up having to do because like you we don't have a you're i should have said it like this you are more you're if you're like us that's how i should have said it <laughs> you don't have an importer's license so you're going to have to deal with what's called a transshipper mm-hmm. the transshipper is the middleman you're you're you keep hitting me with your leg and i think you're telling me stop <laughs> but i'm not saying anything wrong you're gonna to have to deal with a transshipper this is a middleman between the farm and you this is the person that gets your fish through customs gets it all all the necessary paperwork has all of the importing licenses and all of that he's taking responsibility for this box of fish coming in to the united states and once all of that is done that transshipper will ship it to you so what the transshipper is going to tell you is you communicate with the farm whatever farm you want you tell them that you're working with me and that i work out of this airport and let's just say it's dallas because that's where we got fish from last time right wasn't it dallas mm-hmm. why are, what go, go i'm not giving away secrets do you think i'm giving away secrets i mean we worked with a transshipper that works out of dallas what's the big deal it's not a big deal just continue your story stop making these faces woman <laughs> so they're going to tell you contact that farm and then i'm going to be at the airport at this particular day so you say okay cool i'm going to look around i'm going to find this farm and i find this farm in indonesia and i say hey i want one fish and maybe you'll find one that says okay most likely they're going to say no we have a minimum order of 100 or 200 or whatever it is well that's wholesale you can buy fish from overseas and they're still going to charge a lot they're not going to charge the wholesale price okay for just like five you're going to end up paying you're going to pay more than what we would pay but you're not going to pay full uh, retail yeah okay but it's still that's fine how about ten dollars then let's say ten dollars it's usually more than that i've seen them Let's keep the math simple. Okay. Let's say $10, because that's easy. Let me turn that off. I just got an email from Luxurious Bastards Beard Company. How about that? Okay. Back on topic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to tell you, okay, we'll, sh- we'll send you this one fish. It's going to be $10. And it's going to cost twenty six ninety nine for shipping. What? Hmm. Do you think it's free to ship from Indonesia to the United States? It's not. Mm -mm. So they're going to ship that fish there to the transshipper in Dallas Mm -hmm. or Atlanta. Who cares? Whatever it is. And they receive your fish. And then what's the transshipper going to say? Okay. uh, Number one, I have a transshipper fee because I don't work for free. And number two, you also have to pay for shipping for me to ship this fish from you, from me here in Dallas to you in wherever it is that you live. Do you think you're going to get that fish cheaper? Then $25? You're not. I promise you're not. If you are going to order a fish from overseas, I promise you, you're going to pay more than what you would pay if you just went down to your local pet store. Now, if you said, hey, you know what? I want to start a little business and I want to get 400 African cichlids to start breeding. Okay, that you can save a lot of money doing it that way. But if you're buying one fish that's a $25 fish, you're kidding yourself if you think you're going to get it for cheaper than $25. So then you say, okay, well, that's not going to work. So now what do I do? I'm going to buy from some breeder that a guy that I talked to one time knew from back in the day. And so you contact this breeder. You don't know anything about this guy or girl. You don't know what their system is like. They can send you all the pictures they want. I promise you they're the nicest pictures they're going to find. They're not going to send you what their fish room looks like when it's nasty, you know. So they're going to sell themselves. So they're, you're going to, you're not, you're not going to know. You're not going to know what you're getting when you order from somebody like that. So do you take that risk? Probably not. I'm going to tell you right now, if you order fish off of Amazon, you can do that. You can. Amazon? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, somebody put a, oh, there was a picture of fish being sold, beta fish and cups being sold at the dollar store. <laughs> I believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. 
Squibsky needs a good place to buy Hillstream Loaches. I need one too. We were talking about getting some uh, Hillstream Loaches the other day. Yeah. Crams Unlimited in Virginia Beach. Our go-to place mm -hmm. for all things fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I really should have tried to figure out a way to involve Mark in this conversation because you want to talk about somebody with first-hand knowledge. Yeah, we have it, but yeah. he's living it and breathing it right now as we speak. Right. But um, if you order off of Amazon, you get whatever you get. You, you deserve whatever you get <laughs> oh. because there is some shady stuff happening on that website and it's not Amazon's fault. It's scammers that work the system yeah. and, and okay, you back know. to fish stores. That's what I'm talking no, about. No, I'm saying I'm giving people other alternatives. Okay. If you buy off of Aquabid, is Aquabid even a website anymore? Does it I'm, even exist I've anymore? I've never even been on it. I'm going to find out I've right heard, now. I've heard of it. If you don't know what Aquabid is, it's basically the, yeah, it's still there. Oh. It is the eBay of huh. the aquarium industry uh, where you can buy fish direct from people, from breeders, people that are breeding in their houses or maybe they have big facilities or whatever it is. You, you can buy from people there. Again, you don't know what you're getting. These are usually hobbyists that are going to be uh, selling you these fish. And, and here's the thing. That special fish that you found at your pet store for $25, if you go anywhere online and try to buy that fish, odds are there's, you're not going to spend less than $25 because you're going to have to pay for shipping. And, you know, from us, for a beta in the, in the warm months, we can ship it priority mail, which is a lot less expensive. But... It's still an added expense. Even if the fish are cheaper, once you add shipping on to it, you're still paying what you put, would have paid if you had gone to the fish store. So there's a lot of risky stuff that goes on online. And listen, I'm not talking about companies like Imperial Tropicals, even though, yeah, we did order from them. What am I saying? You got a, like five Africans from them. Mm -hmm. uh, Great fish. Live Fish Direct. Cichlid Shack, Great Dave's fish. Rare Aquarium Fish, all of these places, Hans, yeah. they have amazing fish. Right. I'm not talking about these places. Those places are dedicated fish retailers online. Mm -hmm. They're not somebody out of their basement shipping fish. They're you know. making sure the fish is healthy and feeding it and keeping an eye on it for a while before it's even sent to you. So Yeah. I, I would vouch for any of those companies. We've ordered from every single one of them, and they've all been really good. Um, I'm and not talking about those. A hundred percent. Yes, yeah. absolutely. The, but even with those companies, you know, you're you. The reason why you go to a cichlid shack and order is because you go there because they, you can't find the fish that you're looking for at your local pet store. Mm -hmm. I know James. I know the owner of that place. He would tell you the exact same thing. He would say, you know, most people aren't going to do all of their shopping for us, with us. They find fish that they like. They can't find them anywhere, so they come to us to buy them. That's how it was for us when we were selling Africans mm -hmm. off of our website. Dan's Fish, how did I not for, remember oh, yeah. Dan's Fish? Absolutely, I would, I would vouch yeah. for Dan 100 times out of 100. I mean, you get something from him, you are getting absolute top-notch quality. Are you going to spend the cheapest amount? No, probably not. And that's not a knock at Dan. That's not, I would say the same thing for any of the online retailers because they're not doing it to offer you fish for the cheapest cost. They're doing it to offer you fish that you might not be able to find at your local pet store because <clears throat> the big time fish distributors don't typically carry these fish. You got to really go in and, and search for these fish and they're not easy to come by. So that's where these guys get them. And like Dan's importing fish from overseas and Imperial Tropicals is growing a lot of their own fish. So there's a lot of different circumstances that provide fish for these online retailers. I was not talking about them. I was talking about the, the people that are breeding out of their garage, the people that are breeding out of their basements. Is there anything wrong with those people? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. We used to be one of those people. Mm -hmm. But my point is, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know anything about them. All you know is what they tell you. 
Well, I mean, the thing is, if these are people that are doing that and then they're going to clubs and they're auctioning their fish off and you know them and, you know, that's different. I would, I think homebred fish are some of the best fish to get. Absolutely. So. But you are dealing with the world of the unknown. Now, we've gone through your options. Don't worry, I'm not threatening you. I pulled out a knife to... uh, (laughs) To get my my gum out of the package. See how scared I was. She was scared. She was shaking. (laughs) No. Uh, Now let's get to the real question here. Are fish stores ripping you off? Are they charging so much money when you've talked to breeders before? You know how much fish farms sell these fish for. And you've seen these fish for $5.00 listed online first of all they were probably that big but anyway you saw these fish listed for five dollars and then you go to the fish store and it's 25 dollars, and you're thinking what a ripoff let's analyze that for a second and (laughs) don't stab us well cat behave yourself and i won't have to i just probably got demonetized (laughs) i just got demonetized for that i'm being silly and uh the new ceo of (sighs) YouTube is going to, anyway. Yeah, it's not going to be technical difficulty when it just goes (laughs) out in a second. Jeez. (laughs) eBay has ratings and info, so that has to be considered. 100%, yes, you you certainly should. And I'm not saying there's no such thing as a good deal from people online, people breathing out of their garage. Like I said, that was us before. Those people are out there. But you're not going to save money, and you're also going to be worried because you don't know really what you're getting until it shows up at your door. You might be thrilled or you might be disappointed and say, I should have just gone to the fish store and bought it. And not everybody can go to the fish store. Hey, listen, cry me a river. The closest fish store to us is an hour and 15 minutes and that's Aquariums Unlimited. So you people that have fish stores 15 minutes away, I don't want to hear it's too much of a hassle to go to the fish store. (laughs) Yeah, but some people have to go even farther than that. That's what I'm talking about. The perfect world scenario, okay, in retail. I happen to have this sitting here, and it's been sitting here. When was Dallas Aquashella last year? Whenever that was, that's when I got this. I think this. it was like August? I don't know. Uh, the owner of Seachem's son gave this to me. <laughs> Uh, at the booth at Aquashella. It's not like I was some... They were giving these out. It's not like mm-hmm. I was some kind of VIP. And I even put our little sticker on it. Isn't that adorable? So I don't know how much this costs because we don't sell two ounce bottles of Prime. We sell 250, 100, 100 250, and uh, 500. But for the sake of this conversation, let's say this is a $10 bottle of Prime. It's not, I promise. But let's just say it is because we're having a nice conversation here. The perfect world scenario for a person like me, I am a retailer, would be to buy this from my distributor for $5 and then sell this to you for $10, making a 50% profit, right? That's the perfect world scenario in retail. And I can tell you in our industry, that rarely happens. (laughs) I promise you, there's not a 50% margin in this. I can tell you what my margins are uh, with Seachem, but I would have to kill you afterwards. So I'm not going to do that. That's That's a secret. That's a secret. I'm threatening people all night long. That's a secret. And it's between us and it's between Seachem. But uh, I'm happy to sell Seachem products. Let me just say that. But it's not 50%. And very, very few manufacturers are having a 50%. Uh, Once you get to be the big time where I'm ordering... 10,000 of these at a time, maybe I would get that kind of a margin, but right now I'm not. And so you hear that and you think, well, that's that's good, right? You're buying for 10, you're, you're buying for five, you're selling for 10, you're making $5 every single time. That's true, but I'm not taking that $5 and putting it in my pocket, nor is your local fish store owner, no, because there are expenses associated with operating a business of any kind, right. whether it's a, a retail business that we're operating 
out of a 1500 square foot building in our backyard or you're renting a space out in a shopping center somewhere which wow you want to talk about expensive right. um just to just to put it out there when we had our store we closed it in 2016 15 yeah. so eight years ago not exactly eight but you know what i'm saying um leo he's just kidding he's just kidding <laughs> Our fish store was in a, de it was a, a destination store, like a freestanding store. It was not in a shopping center. Right. Uh, we, at the end of the day, when, oh, hi, Fish Rescue is here. I haven't seen him in here in a long time. Rich, Josh, whichever hey. one of you that is, what's up? <laughs> um, we got our building dirt cheap. It was right down the street from us. It was in BF, King George, Virginia. It was way off the beaten path you you had to want to come to us to come to our store and it, but it was great we loved it when you added up all of the expenses associated with that business being water heat internet uh obviously power all of those things and you add rent to it insurance we were looking at about three thousand dollars a month now if there's anybody in here that owns a fish store they're like three thousand a month <laughs> Y'all couldn't make that work. <laughs> I mean, that is balls cheap. But that was King George. I mean, you know, King George, Virginia. Who, who's there? Nobody. All three people in King George. Uh, there's more than three people. And <laughs> there's negative now because we moved out of there. Rich, it is big rich. You don't type very big, Rich. That's a problem. <laughs> uh, we had it pretty good, $3,000 a month. Uh, our rent was not 3000 That was everything put together. And that didn't include other expenses. Expenses that you don't even think about, like buying bags to put fish in to give to customers. Buying shopping bags to put stuff in to give to customers. Employees, because... Well, I haven't we gotten had to, there yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. Well, I We mean, didn't have any. We so. didn't have any. So we were working seven days a week, like... 15 hour days it was insane the only day we took off was when my son graduated marine boot camp and even on his graduation day no that it was his his graduation from high school oh yeah graduation from high school we took that saturday off because we had some people uh we didn't even close the store we had people that knew how to take care of fish were regulars and they came in and they helped us and they were amazing still good Super friends to this day friends. uh we we played poker with them Every less week. than a year ago and i miss yeah, that I miss because them. we don't have anybody to play poker with down here yeah yeah we got lucky there but we didn't have any employees now we're talking about poker but okay no, listen <laughs> i can't talk about poker because i don't even know how to play poker i just bs my way through it that night but, i did too um Let's use Aquariums Unlimited mm. as an example, because I, I, I do think they're like the gold standard yeah. for a, an aquarium store, uh, not just in our area, but, but anywhere. I, I really don't see anybody better than them. Um, we've never been in there and seen less than like six employees run around that place. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure Mark told me that his staff is 12 total. And um, they're hiring too, by the way. If you know how to take care of fish, okay, just uh, I thought I'd throw that out there. One of the people that works there came up to me while we were there and said, "Hey, I learned what I know about fish keeping from you, and that's how I got my job here." <laughs> I was like, "Whoa! Do you, you didn't mention that in the interview, did you?" And he said, "No." And then <laughs> Mark and I have known each other for a while. Mark is the owner, and Mark was like, "Yeah, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't have hired him." He was being silly. Mark is a rascal, but. I would love to go work there just once in a while, just to work, not to make money, just to volunteer. I think it would be fun. Well, I'm sure Mark would uh, love for you to do that. Imagine what his payroll is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to start doing math, but you're talking 12 employees. He's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. So, I, I mean, I would just guess Don't that... Guess. A minimum of $15 an hour for each one. 
And then he's got some that are, you know, like more managerial levels and stuff like that. So the, the amount of money that he's paying out every single month, every single week, every day to pay his employees is far more than what it cost us to run our entire business when we were in King George. And he's in a very, very nice, very sought after, very busy strip mall so in Virginia Beach. overhead is going to be a lot more. And he's on the corner and he's... Add, actually adding an additional 5,000 square feet. I'm not even going to guess what his rent is. I'm sure he would tell me if I asked him, but I, I can. I would probably skip a few heartbeats if I found out what his rent is uh, because I'm sure it's four or five times what we were paying at ours. Nice. And he's doubling the size of his place. He's going to be doing a really big grand opening event. We are absolutely going to be there, and I cannot wait yes. for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But the point that I'm trying to make is these stores are expensive to run. Sure, you are probably going to have, you know, you might have a local fish store. We've been in these where the building is a freestanding building that's been there for 35 years and the, the same business has been in there the whole time. Maybe they own their building. Who knows? Maybe they haven't gone through hard times and had to take out second mortgages and all that kind of stuff. Maybe their expenses are a little bit lower. But the point is, You've got manpower, staffing, you've got insurance, you've got benefits, you've got utilities, internet. All of these places have to have super fast internet. You've got everything associated with running a business is what comes out of that $5 that they make every time they sell one of these. So it's not like Mark, the owner of Aquariums Unlimited, sells a bottle of this, takes that $5 and puts it in his pocket and says, woohoo. No, it doesn't work that way. First of all, the five, the first $5 has to go towards buying another bottle of this. And then that second $5, the profit margin $5, he's got to pay all of his other expenses. And then he's got to pay himself something at the end of the day, which for the work he's doing out there, I hope it's a lot what he pays himself because he deserves it. Mm -hmm. That's dry goods. That's fish food. That's filters. Uh, that's chemicals, fish nets, air pumps, that kind of stuff. You're hoping to make a 50% profit. Mark might. I don't know. I don't know what his rates are, and it's none of my business. Uh, he does a lot of sales there. He does a lot of volume, so he probably gets better rates than we do. But you hope to get to that 50% mark. Most won't. Uh, we sell a lot of stuff out of our backyard. You have no idea the amount of stuff that comes out of that barn and we don't have the best rates there's always better rates out there someday we'll get it but um that is dry goods these are things that they put on their shelves that are not gonna die sure fish food it's mandatory that they have a expiration date on it but we all know if it's sealed that food's good forever but you know you have to you know, you're trying to sell it within three months before the expiration date. Um, but the point is, you take this bottle, you buy it from Seachem, which actually you don't. You buy it from a distributor who carries Seachem because Seachem will not sell direct to you. And you put it on your shelf and you never have to touch it again to make that $5. The next time you touch this is going to be when the customer Back comes door. up and says, here you go. I'd like to buy that, please. That is the easiest way to sell anything. Now let's get into the fish. See, that's where things, <laughs> there's another level to this because fish are not the same. Mm -hmm. You have to take care of fish. You have to provide water, heat, food. Chemicals like water conditioner and mm -hmm. catapa leaves and you know, whatever you need to take care of them. You have to feed them and clean their tanks individually <laughs> all, all of us here all of us here know what's involved in taking care of fish what's involved for us may not be as extreme as it is for big rich uh because you know he's got a public aquarium in his property but we all know what's involved in taking care of fish and if you skip out on maintenance for a couple days because you you know the new season of mandalorian's out and you neglect your tanks for an extra couple of days, nobody cares. But if you do that at a fish store, what happens? People start to say, oh, I'm not going back in there. Their tanks are nasty. Yep. There was algae everywhere. I saw a dead fish. You know, 
these days of social media, you have to be on point. And I can say, I've never seen a store more on point than Aquarium Info. Aquarium Info. Okay. Aquariums Unlimited is. I'm going to take this call real quick. Okay. Who is it? I'm just taking the call. Yay! I get it all for myself. I don't know. She got a call. It's kind of scary. I don't know who that is. So the people at the fish store have to take care of these fish. They have to provide the fish with food. Uh, if your fish store doesn't feed their fish, that's a problem. Uh, I have actually been in fish stores before and the people knew nothing about me or you know who I was or anything like that. And I love that. I love when that happens. Um, she's coming back. Must have been Daggone it, I didn't get much time by myself. They tricked me. I thought it was important because it was like where CJ would be. So I was like, oh, it was that area code. It kind of freaked me out. So I didn't want to not answer the call. Oh, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> so there's another, another factor here too, and that's loss. I don't care how good a fish store is. I don't care how clean their tanks are. I don't care how good their employees are. You have thousands of fish in a fish store. You are going to have some die. It's going to happen. And that doesn't happen with this. But that happens with fish. So we're dealing with something that is, it, it takes more, it costs more, to have that product available to you, the customer, than it does for this. Daggone it. Thank you, uh, Christopher Hill. <laughs> Order a Shark Pro 900. Good for you. You are going to love that filter, my friend. Um, big round of applause for Christopher Hill. But no, <laughs> uh, it doesn't cost me anything other than keeping the doors open to put this on my shelf and have it available for you. It cost me a lot of money to run aquariums, to have the aquariums maintained either by me or by staff to feed those fish. Uh, again, using Mark at, at Aquariums Unlimited and his staff over there, using them again, uh, they feed, they don't feed cheap stuff that they buy in bulk. They crack open food that they have there in the store and they take it out of inventory and mm -hmm. that's what they feed to their fish. We're talking like whole mysis shrimp and all of this kind oh, of yeah. stuff. They're doing it right. They're and that, them really good. that costs money. It costs a lot of money. So Juan Garcia just put in an order too. Malaysian driftwood. I wonder if that was the one asking about it. Oh. <laughs> I just made a sale. How about that? Uh, we get the little alerts that pop up. You know, that's how I see that is happening. But uh, while there are two of us in here, it, it, it's another Christopher Hill. That's adorable. Oh. Um, the point is, it costs a lot of money to have fish available to customers. Fish die. Fish will be on in the tanks for a long time. Now, if you're fortunate and you have a heavy amount of traffic that comes through your store, like Aquariums Unlimited does. Hey, listen, folks. Mark at Aquariums Unlimited is a friend of mine. I've known him for a couple of years. I adore this man's business. I absolutely love it. He is in no way paying us. When we went there to get our stuff, if you watched the video last week, uh, I hinted about the video coming out this week with the fish we paid for those fish we've mm -hmm. gone there since and we've paid for more stuff mark does not give us anything he is in no way like sponsoring this channel or anything mm -hmm. like that we're talking about his business because we like it it's amazing yeah and like he it. deserves the praise and, and his whole staff deserves praise and there's one member of the staff there i do not remember his name that looks like a skinny version of the big show when you go in there, He's you'll know exactly tall. who it is I'm talking about. I wish you could clean my beta tanks. They have tanks that are up high, and he just reaches in them like this. like it's, He's like six foot nine, at least. And he just reaches in there, no problem, where the, everybody else has to get on little ladders. It's adorable. And it's so cool because he bought like two or three of my betas. And we didn't even know. I didn't know. I thought that was so awesome. So, I think you understand that if there's a... if if this is on the shelf for three weeks, it doesn't cost me any more than it did the day I bought it. If there's a fish 
in, a, in an aquarium for three weeks. I have fed that fish every single day. Mm. I've provided that fish, or whoever works at the store, mm. has provided that fish with a healthy environment to be in. Uh, we've performed maintenance on those tanks. We've done all of that to ensure that that fish stays alive and healthy so that we can sell it and make a profit. This is why fish cost more, folks. So if you're thinking that your fish store is ripping you off, I'm going to tell you in most, most situations, they're absolutely not. Now, I have been at a fish store before, and I have looked at a fish that was a specialty fish. This was not Aquariums Unlimited, because Mark knows better than to do this to me. But I saw this fish, and I said, whoa, that's, that's nice. Yeah. And uh, when he told me, how much he was selling that fish for, I said, oh, it's not as nice now. Yeah. Because I was like, I have all of these places, stock lists. I know how much these fish cost. And it was like a six inch long frontosa that they wanted $399 for. And this was a fish that I could buy today from a distributor because I'm a licensed retailer. I could buy for like 60 bucks. So... You're charging 400 That's a bit much. It was a gorgeous fish. And what this fish store owner was doing was saying, well, somebody will pay that. And he's right. I'm sure somebody will. Mm -hmm. That's somebody assessing each fish and saying that one's worth this much more because it's prettier. And to me, that's, that's a little bit dirty. I prefer, you know, you put 25 Oscars in the tank and they're all the same price. And that's the way most fish stores do it. But, you know, you will run across some occasionally that'll take advantage of a really nice fish that they have in inventory. If you want to steer away from that, I'm not going to yell at you. I wouldn't blame you. But to yeah. someone, that fish is worth $400. Someone, a.k.a. sucker. <laughs> well, <laughs> but is it a sucker, though? I mean... If it's a lot more... You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean. Ridiculously more. We paid $600 a piece for our chihuahuas. Um, and they are two of the most important little farts in my life. Mm -hmm. I would have paid five times that much. And so somebody may come along and buy that fish for $400. And it is the most important fish they've ever had. And they absolutely love it. And it's 100% worth that much to that particular person. But maybe not all of us would believe that mm -hmm. um, fish stores are not ripping you off if there's if you're somebody who has talked to fish farms and you see that they're three dollars a piece from the fish farm and the fish store selling them for 12.99 they're not just marking them up by a hundred percent and then and you think that that's ripping you off it's absolutely not these are not car dealers that are trying to make absolutely the most money possible and they're trying to rip you off no they're not now, you might have one that is, but I know what I know about the industry and what I know about how much fish cost to buy wholesale and to buy them from farms and all of this kind of stuff, I can tell you that your run-of-the-mill fish store that's selling Neon Tetris for $4 is not ripping you off. Okay? If they are ripping you off, tell them to come talk to me. And tell them I will call them out in front of 64,000 mm -hmm. people on YouTube. Yeah. Well, and I will say, hey, don't go to this place. Yeah. I'm not going to do that because I don't do that kind of stuff. Oh, but darn. I'll make them look bad. Just kidding. <laughs> For I you, mean, I will do it. I will definitely talk about stores I love in places I've gotten fish from or fish-related stuff from or, or whatever. I don't think that it pays to talk bad about another place. Now, if it's a company that's a little shady, <laughs> I think that's different. But I don't know. I don't think saying anything bad about a fish store is worth it. Uh, Kyle Morrison has a $23,000 service dog. He's worth every penny. Now, here's the thing, Kyle. Whoa, what? Uh, first of all, good for you. Uh, wow. Wow. Now, I'm going to assume, you don't have to tell me, it doesn't matter, but when you talk about service dogs, I'm going to assume 
German Shepherd, Labrador, something like that. It doesn't matter what it is. That dog, that is your service dog, and service dog can mean a lot of things. It could be a working dog, like you are a public servant, uh, you're a law enforcement officer or a firefighter, and that's a working dog that's been trained, or it could be a, an emotional support animal, whatever it is. That dog has received an incredibly expensive training to be able to perform the service that it does. That's what makes that dog more valuable than your average German Shepherd or Labrador. Labrador. And so that's what we're talking about here. It's, you know, the, the buyer is the one that's going to determine the value of it. And if, if your fish store is charging absolutely astronomical rates, it could be that they are ripping you off. I think it's unlikely. It could be that they're brand new and they don't get very good rates yet from the fish farms and the distributors. It could be that they just haven't found a good source for whatever the fish is that you're after. And so they're doing your typical markup on fish and it's just making it look like theirs are way more expensive than everybody else. Well, it doesn't just look like it. They are, but they're, that's the reason why you don't know what it is. But I think it's pretty easy to know if a fish store is ripping you off. And it's not because you find out that they're paying $5 and they're selling for 20. That's not ripping you off. That's the whole point that I'm trying to make here. If you go to fish store A in your town and they're charging $20 for three inch long blue acaras, are they worth that much? Who knows? They're a beautiful fish. And then you go to the pet store down the street and they're selling their blue acaras for $69. You go, huh? Hmm. Yeah. Why is that? That makes you start questioning it. But don't question it simply because you've seen a sheet one day that says neon tetras are a dollar and they're selling them for four dollars. That's robbery. No, it's not. That's that's what fish stores do because it costs money to keep those fish, to keep them healthy, keep them happy, keep them alive so that you can buy them. Yep. John, what about they just got their shipment in and I went the next day and I bought one of the fish. They only had the fish for a day. Sure, that's true. But if that happened with every single one of their fish that they ever brought in for a, every single shipment, I'm sure they would sell their fish for cheaper. But the fact is, you bought that fish that day, but they're going to have fish three months from now that are from that shipment that they just got yesterday. So don't think that that's going to be a whole thing either. Some fish stores, maybe if you're a good enough customer, might work some kind of a deal like that for you where they say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to be putting in an order this week and we're going to get these fish. If you want these, I'll put them on that order for you and I'll give you a special rate for them. You might have it like that. We had people like that at our store that it would be like, hey, yeah, sure, no problem. Stick them in there for you and I don't need to charge what I typically would charge. Uh, but th that's certain circumstances and you got to be you got to be a norm to be able to qualify for something like that right. so don't just automatically assume that because your fish store is charging normal markup that they're ripping you off they're not mm -mm. and if they are give me their name it's all yours now lady wow geez i don't even know where to go with that <laughs> we're talking about okay all right, so we're talking about buying dogs, fish. Well, let's talk about rescuing cats that end up having asthma. <laughs> Gerald, one of the cats that we have here that we kind of came into owning when we bought the house, it was Gerald and Jasper. On my channel, Roots and Whiskers, I did a kind of an introductory to Gerald, meet Gerald. Well, since we have had Gerald, he has had, let's see, what did he start off with? Worms. Um, he had worms. He wasn't fixed. So he got worm. He got dewormed. He got fixed. He's had two um, abscesses, which have been pretty bad. Uh, and now he has asthma. So... That was, that was a very interesting vet visit last week. I was like, wait a minute, how does a cat get asthma? <laughs> but we love him. And I would do it all over again just because he's a sweetheart. 
Yeah, Gerald's Gerald's my guy now. Him and no, Jasper. He's, no, he's my guy. No, he's no, he's white. He, definitely the mine. way he meows, he goes, meow. I can't even do it the right way. He's like, meow. It's a very, <laughs> a very, um, <laughs> takes a lot of effort for him to, yeah. to meow. It's adorable. So I'll talk to him in that voice, and it's so funny because he, I think he understands me because I'll talk to him in the voice like his meow. I know that sounds ridiculous. People are like, whatever, we're out. But, um, okay. Plant of the day. Can can I do plant of the you day? You sure can. Oh my gosh, Melanie, are you still here? All right. So I'm trying to learn how to say some of these plants the right way. All right. So bear with me. Um, I ordered from. I want to make sure I say it in order because I always forget. Just like I did our website in the very beginning. I ordered from Peace, Love, and Happiness Club, and they are based out of, I believe, it's Seattle in Washington. And I ordered a few plants, but I'm only going to show you like one kind that I got tonight because why do I want to show you everything tonight? Um, I got the Epa Epiprimnon. Yeah. Panatum. <laughs> Anyways, it's the Albo. So like the variegated version. It's like, um, have you ever heard of Cebu Blue? That was like really popular. It still is. And I already have that one. So when I saw this one, I was so excited because it's the variegated version. And it has the white. You see it? Wait, you see it? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I want to make sure everybody can hear me say it's beautiful. <laughs> and I am so happy with this place because they have so many like specialty, what I consider specialty plants. See, look, oh, it's so gorgeous. It's adorable. They have so many specialty plants. Like I love shopping at Plant Arena, but I kind of, started going to uh this place now because they have the things that you can't find at plant arena they have the like more specialty things and uh also they have stickers and this one completely describes me so i got it but apparently i think it's supposed to be for the plant describing the plant but i don't know i think it describes me better um and then of course their their sticker so if you want plants you want really cool plants you want the kind you can't find at Lowe's or Plant Arena then go to Peace Love and Happiness Club Peace Love and Happiness Club dot com and tell them Lisa sent you also just because it's that time of the year oh they're sad now because <laughs> it's dark when it's daytime my shamrocks will like bloom and they look all wonderful but because it's dark they close that's just what they do but in the morning they'll open up and they'll be really happy again but i get my shamrocks every single year but i get these from the local like grocery store i get them from food lion four dollars so yeah all wait right. i mean are you going to mention who works there or is it supposed to be a secret? um you know, Jimmy yeah. Jimmy works there on the weekends. I know he goes there on the weekends. He's the one that told me all about this place. So I had never even heard of him until Jimmy told me. So what? What? There's always somebody. Really? What? What's it saying? I thought this was a fish show, not a plant show. Oh, sorry. Well, whatever. Uh, plants go in aquariums too. But anyway, so what else was I going to say? Oh, I just want to say this one time. If you're ever like cleaning your aquariums, you don't want to listen to just fish stuff. You don't want to just listen to YouTube. Uh, there's this awesome podcast and you can learn all about plants. Plant Daddy. That is my favorite podcast ever. When I'm doing, you know, cleaning out the beta tanks, when I'm doing stuff in the fish room, I listen to Plant Daddy. They're my favorite. You're going to love them. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have room to do the... Uh, oh, yeah, I have questions, too. I have comments of the day. We, we might be able to do some because uh, I, don't, I don't... I know I was talking to James earlier, and he's not streaming tonight because oh. he's still getting his uh, internet situation straight, but... Oh, Jimmy's in chat. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, is he in there? How about that? Jimmy, I ordered more plants. Oh, yeah, I told you that. Yeah, I look am... at that. He came in just... A, you ordered more? Yeah. I have more coming. 
Jimmy, what have you done? It's the best place ever. At least I didn't order the big one. So, Andrew Moore, <laughs> uh, did I, I did not welcome, uh, okay, see, I saw Hupma, Hupma Jones and I, I messed up because uh, she's super chatted like four times tonight and Aww. I, and I, yep, there it is. Uh, okay. Oblivious Lime Gaming. I wonder if that is the one who ordered um, the Malaysian Driftwood. Also, oh. got it because I've been doing it. It's why people are doing it. Igor Perez, I'm probably saying your name right, ordered a Lumilite 48 incher while we were live here tonight. Jesse Campbell oh. also ordered an Echinodorus Reni and two tissue cultures. I'm so proud of you. You're doing so good with the plant pronunciation. We're learning, guys. We're learning. Yeah, but. Uh, that's because I'm not trying to say the next one because that one's a tough one. Yeah, it's a. I can say it in my head. It's a tissue culture. I can say it in my head, but it doesn't come out right when I say it. Uh, and this one, taxophilium. Taxophilium. No, I know how to say that one. That's pretty. Wait, simple. somebody told me in in one of the comments how to say it properly. Taxophilum, not philium. Well, I mean, taxophilum. There's no e at the end, so I could have told you that taxophilum spiky. I mean, that's how I've always said it. Oinkmaster Supreme Forever adopted to save sick white Petco Beta, positive buoyancy, gills swollen and purple. Fasted for three days, eating peas and garlic guard. Should I try Epsom salt bath? Ooh, wow. If it was me in this situation, um, I would, I know there's never any guarantee when it comes to these things, but the what I would do if it was my situation with this beta fish is I'd make sure that, of course, it's in the in a aquarium by itself, something small, just because if you're quarantining, you're going from a cup. Not all fish are are able to handle going from a cup to like a five gallon or ten gallon, so you know it might need to be in like a two or three gallon, which is really hard to heat. So. Eh. You have to put him in a five gallon that's fine uh but i would make sure that he's alone not with anybody else um make sure the heat is up a little bit like maybe 81 82 like on the higher end of the 78 to 82 just so that you know warm and cozy comfortable and yes i would do an epsom salt bath to try to help release maybe something that might be going on in there it's worth a shot um and don't feed for a couple of days just to, I know you said you already fasted, but um, I would, I would try that first. And there is, you know, some people say peas are fine. Some people say peas aren't good. I prefer to use spirulina, um, you know, and that usually does help if there's a situation like that. Give that a shot um maybe lower the water too a little bit so you're not having to worry he's not um did she say it was a he i'm pretty sure she did he's not worrying about trying to swim up too far you know there's there's less room to struggle with swimming and stuff so i mean i would give that a shot and catapa leaves it it's not gonna cure anything but it helps squibsky squibsky says or is it Sky? Squib Sky. Who knows? Just put in an order for a bunch of fish food. Yes, you did. And that reminds me. I'm not going to say your real name because no. I'm looking at your real name right now because I see the order as we speak, along with Christopher Hill's second email or second order of the night. I guess when we say that people have ordered, more people want to <laughs> order. I don't know. But uh, Squibsky, Squib Sky, um, reminds me of something that I have to admit to all of you. I'm not very happy about this. I'm not proud of this, uh, but I am here to tell you that I have been proven to be an absolute idiot. Uh, oh, are you talking about the fish food? Oh yeah, you gotta talk about that. This is a good one. And I have something to talk about too when it comes to that fish food. I still think it's stupid. <laughs> Last week, I talked about the new Seachem Flakes. They're flying out the door. Uh, we're supposed to be able to order more tomorrow from our distributor that we prefer to buy from. Um, 
He's got them coming in tomorrow. We're going to stock up on everything with the uh, Seachem Flakes. But last week I was talking about how they have the Shrimp Flakes. And I was like, this is so dumb. They're, it's not shrimp food. It's food made. It's it. I was presenting it as, this is food for shrimp. <laughs> and I thought that's what it was. You are training cannibals because you fed it to shrimp. They loved it. I mean, they they loved it. Because she thought the same thing. I did. <laughs> I was not thinking, nor was she, that it was simply the description of the ingredient, the primary ingredient of the food. Well, the discus like, one says discus food. I don't think I'm, I've got a bunch of dried up discus in it. And that's why I say it's still stupid. I understand that a lot of brands have krill flakes. That's kind of like the standard one that people do extreme has it northfin has it there's a lot of brands that have krill flakes but i i, I just I, I, why is it called shrimp flakes <laughs> <laughs> i i mean yeah i'm stupid what can i tell you wow. for us we were sent some of it you fed it to the shrimp because it said shrimp. They gobbled it up. We're like, oh my god, this is great. This is the best. Everybody loved it. And uh, and, and but you know we were cannibalizing shrimp the whole time. But come on, but, we all do yeah, that. We I feed mean, fish to our fish. I mean that's not, not exactly live a new fish, thing. Though, but yeah. No, but we're feeding fish. But let me tell you. you know. Let me tell you something about the discus fish flakes from Seacam. They're not made from discus. No, they're not the made from discus. But let me tell you, you open up that can and you take a smell. I don't know if you guys do this, but I smell my fish food. I like to smell She eats it, it too. No. Okay. It smells like garlic. It was, oh my gosh. I love garlic. I put garlic in everything. I love it. I was smelling it. I was like, wow, this smells so good. These fish are, they're going to love it. And then I just thought, you know, why not? It tastes like Let's see if it tastes like garlic, you know? Let's just a little teeny, teeny flake. And I stuck it on my tongue. It dissolved really quick. And I was like, it's actually not that bad. And then I read the, you know, on the back, you know, it's got like zucchini in it and broccoli. And I was like, if something happened, if there was a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> zombie <laughs> apocalypse. There you go. I had a girl. <laughs> I would eat that food first. So, there's my story. <laughs> we'll eat the fish's food before we eat the fish. <laughs> I mean, none of our fish would be really much of a meal anyway. Mm. I suppose the Oscars, but you know, ew, that would be like eating one of our dogs. Like, I, I can't do that. Mm. That's that's not going to happen. No. So yeah, I'm an idiot when it comes to the shrimp flakes. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I've never once told you I'm a smart person. And we've sold like 40 cans of that shrimp food. So either there were 40 other idiots or there were 40 people that are like, okay, this idiot doesn't know what he's talking about, but it's still good food. So, uh, yeah, I, brain fart. What are you going to do? Uh, but I'm really glad I didn't go to the people at Seachem because I'm supposed to have a meeting with them next week. And I was going to go to them and be like, what's the deal with this? And I would have looked like such a jackass if I had done that. I'm so glad that uh, everybody's making fun of your apocalypse. Well, I never say it right. I'm like, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I don't know. I have to actually sound it out. It's too complicated. <coughs> Lola, England. Ugh, where's the best place to purchase live plants online that I won't end up getting pest snails in my tank from the plants? <laughs> Tell her. Mm. It's okay. It's from us. That's who you get them from. Come on. <laughs> Did you not know that we're selling plants net yet? Maybe it's because we haven't heavily promoted them yet, and we should. But, you know, we do. We sell tropical plants. In fact, uh, Jesse Campbell just ordered some. Thank you, Jesse, for that. I read that earlier. It was the Echinodorus Rani and the other one that we can't say, and the uh, Texafilum Spikey. Yeah, good job. Leo 209 Aquatics, what's the real difference between the CJ Whale and the CJ Space Echo? PS 978,967 people watching. What's the biggest Whoa. Anubia you carry? Is that the plural for Anubius? 
Anubia? Or is that Leo? That's either Leo being really smart or not so smart. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I've never heard of it referred to as Anubia, but that could be the plural for Anubius. Uh, the biggest one we sell is the Calidifolia. Yeah. Um, they, they, they're not massive, but for... They're nice. Uh, for Anubius, <laughs> they're big. You, you sent one to Sean, right? With the I beta. Did. Yeah. Yep. Show sure enough did. Uh, look. Oh, and uh, what's the difference between the sail, whale and the echo? The whale has a, a stronger pump on it. It's a completely different design. Um, the space echo was designed to work for uh, not only aquariums, but also uh, turtle tanks which has that really, really low return if oh, you yeah. want it to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, no, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. But Tanner uses the CJ uh, Shark. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and it's, I mean, they're, they're two completely different designs. It's not exactly a Maserati and a Yugo, but it's like a Maserati and a Lexus. You know what I mean? Like, they're both really good. They both have their differences. They both pretty much do the same thing. They just do it a little bit differently. And uh, the whales are, are not physically bigger, but they're, they're more powerful and can handle larger tanks. So that's the difference between them. Uh, Lakeisha Mills. Oh. Is, she's, that's your friend from the club. Yeah. <coughs> that you're supposed to be well, at tonight. Yeah, and didn't she's go not to. there either, obviously. I couldn't go. I was so sad, Lakeisha. I messaged Shelly and I told her I wasn't going to be able to go. Because I wouldn't be getting back till after midnight tonight if I did. I have to get up super early in the morning and be on the road for four hours. Anyway, I just couldn't do it. So, Vibes Aquatics with the dollar ninety nine coffee time. Love y'all. Hey, now guys. Vibes. Um, doesn't he have a beard? He has a beard, doesn't he? I, I feel like he does. I haven't seen him in a while. Doesn't Vibes Aquatics have a beard? You're the last one that saw him in person. I'm pretty sure he does. I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have time to check, but I'm pretty sure he does. I thought you were going to go on so, Facebook or something. The 1912 Bastard. Oh, what do you got to say? I know I, I got to keep saying that foul language. We're demonetized all night tonight. I can't get the camera to focus. Anyway, that says, you can't read it, but it says 1912 Bastard. That's the name of the luxurious bastard. It's got coffee scent in it. I'm smelling coffee mm. as we speak. He smells so good. So you'll like that vibes because you're always talking about coffee and you bring us that amazing coffee every time we see you in Dallas. Uh, so hopefully going to be seeing you in three months and you don't have to bring us coffee this time. I mean, we'll just be happy to see you. Yeah. If you want to bring it, I'm not going to be mad at you, yeah. but uh, you don't have to. Jack said, I just wanted to tell you both, thank you very much for all the inspiration that you give to this fish community and keep up the great work. Thank you. Jack knows that we never get tired of hearing that. We are happy to do it. Thank you so much for that, yes. Jack. Hope Mud Jones again. Son's name is Dominic Rennell. Rennell? I'm going to say Rennell. Yeah, Jones. Aww, Jones. Like That's that. cute. That's, That's adorable. Cute. It's an adorable name. Are we going to get to see said child at mm -hmm. one of these shows? Maybe. We'll they see. typically, we would see them in Florida, right? Was it or Dallas? no, it was Dallas. Dallas. It yeah. was Dallas, Dallas yeah. yeah. Aquatic Wong became a member. Welcome, and I think that's brand new. A brand new member. Welcome, Aquatic Wong. Welcome to Fry. Andrew War Moore. Love the new Seachem food. See, he probably bought the shrimp ones too. Uh, <laughs> that I bought from your store. It's always awesome to get a thank you message from you both. Means a lot. Aw, you're welcome. We got a, I, and I'm a terrible person. I forgot to uh, message the person back, but... Uh, Somebody commented on our Instagram the other day about that. Like every time I get an order from you and I get the handwritten thing, I'm, it's, I, I'm tickled by it. And that's, yeah, we do that. And we're always going to do that. Yeah. Uh, if we get to the point where we're doing five, 600 orders a day, am I going to be able to do, I don't know. We, but I'll never go to a stamp. I'm not going to do that. But uh, that's just, you might as well just write it. Yeah. We'll figure out a way to make it happen. Um, We'll see. But uh, but thank you for ordering the Seachem food. Your fish are going to love it. On that note, Trisha Cotton ordered a Bacopa Caroliniana. It's not Carolinian. It's Caroliniana. 
and I love that one because it's got Carolina in it. Oh, uh, yeah. That is absolutely that one of my favorite. I have a lot of my tanks right now, yeah. One of my new First favorite fast. plants. You're going to love that, Tricia. And Mark Kimmitz oh, with yeah, some yeah. three-in-one I Cats Aquatics. Mm -hmm. And uh, some replacement sponges for his Title 35. Look at this. Look at this beautiful stuff that's happening here tonight. Uh, you, too, could get your... Name said. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You're so silly. <laughs> <laughs> UPS are living the dream. Hey, guys. Hope all is well with both of you. I love the video this weekend. I've always wanted a salt tank, but now I really want one ASAP. Aww. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Uh, that video was a thrill for me to do. I, I hope Jimmy's not in here because he'll feel bad for hearing me say this. But uh, I almost didn't want to put mine up after I saw Jimmy's. I said, oh, no. Like, how can I top that? I wasn't trying to top it, but, like, that's not fair. That's not fair that I have to follow up Jimmy. I mean, that guy is next level. He's he's not next level. He's 37 levels up. Mm -hmm. And I watch his videos. It inspires me so much to be better at what I do. And I just... If, if you don't know what John's talking about, then you need to go to the Fritz channel. And watch the video that uh, Fritz did, Sean and Evie and Jimmy. Uh, they were here a few weeks ago. And they did a video basically in th their version of being here and setting up the saltwater tank. So if you saw ours, you definitely need to go check out Fritz's. But here's the thing. You need to wait till Sunday afternoon. Why? Because no, no. twelve thousand people have already seen it. Because it, they show the fish, and we wanted the fish to be a secret. So go watch it. If you want to know what fish we got, watch that. But then you'll also find out in my video on Sunday. Yeah, but it's a different version. It's, and I'm and not. There's, and there's cool stuff. There's something funny. There's something really funny that Sean does in our video. That's not in the Fritz video. That's true. That is true. It it involves. Something that I'm convinced Sean is obsessed with. <laughs> yes. And it's it's rather funny. I think it may have shown him doing it in their video, but they didn't make a big deal out of it. We've got like three examples of yeah. him doing this. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, so yeah, you definitely are going to want to watch uh, the video we put up on Sunday. Um, it's There's going to be footage in that video that you also saw in the Fritz video of Evie walking her and I through the store shopping for the fish. But... Um, Jimmy kind of focused on the ones that we ended up getting in that video and a couple others. I'm going to, in my video, I'm, I'm that close to being done with it, um, be showing a lot more of the fish that, that she showed us and, and told us about and uh, then making the decision and all of that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's a fun video. And um, and you'll get to see the, the absolutely stunning fish, every single one of them is a stunner. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to watch that on Sunday for sure. And I got to tell you, uh, UPS or Katie, uh, I am not going to, conv to, to convert this channel into a saltwater channel. <laughs> but oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's funny what you said there, Mindy, because that's kind of what we're talking about. But um, I'm not I, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to convert our YouTube channel over to a saltwater mm -hmm. channel. But the really cool thing about it for me as a hobbyist and also as a YouTuber is it's a whole new world. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like starting all over again. If I wanted, I would have unlimited in, uh, topics that I could talk about if I wanted to go all saltwater. But I'm not dumb. I'm not going to do that. But there will be, you know, maybe every once a month or so, we'll be putting up a video that is about the saltwater tank um, because it's amazing and you should all get one because they're awesome. And uh, we're going to be getting another one. I'm just saying. <laughs> I talked about it in that video. She's getting one. Yeah. It's not, not as big, not going to be as big as the one I've got. And I'm not doing the same thing you did. I want to go more in depth with it. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Stephanie McGadigan McGettigan, I do that every time, Stephanie, and I'm sorry. <laughs> every single time I do that. Hope you are doing well. We are doing very well. Uh, thank you so much for that. Phil B., 
Welcome to Fry Phil. Hip Hop Hillbilly. Hip Hip Hop Hip Hop Anonymous. <laughs> That's funny. What movie is that from? I remember hearing that. I know what it's from, but do you know who it's from? Oh. Big Daddy. Oh, Big Daddy. That's right. Any ex- <laughs> I love Adam Sandler. Uh, that was Rob Schneider that said that. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, any experience with giant betas digging and playing in the sand? Mm. Got a male giant beta in a planted 10-gallon black blasting sand. Has made two divots uh, doing his beta wiggle in the sand. Super active and eats. He sounds like he's an African-American. <laughs> African-American. African cichlid. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Demonetized again. We're definitely canceled now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know what I mean when the African cichlids go around and around and they want to do the mating thing. No. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I've. Will your foot fit in your mouth? I don't know. No, I'm trying to think <laughs> about my betas. I've never had a giant do that. Um,. And I'm trying to think of why. I don't know that I would be concerned about that, though. Yeah, I and you just gave us ten dollars, and I don't really have an answer for that. Um, it, I, no, I've never seen that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it doesn't mean uh, that anything's wrong with your beta. It doesn't mean that there's something you need to be. <laughs> Joey canceled you. You don't need to be losing sleep over it or anything like that. I don't think that's a sign at all that your fish is, you know, mentally ill or going to no, die or no, anything like not that. At all. You have a fun fish that's just adventurous and likes to dig around. Yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of fish. I'm not going to describe the fish the way she just did because <laughs> I, I like my job. But, but, uh, but yeah, that's. I, and, I wouldn't worry about it And it's a 10 it gallon much. tank, so it's like he's got plenty of room in there. Maybe he's looking for food. Is there like extra food down there that he's looking for? I mean, other than that, I don't think it's a problem. So. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. Michael Tipton went and got me a bigger tank for my yellow labs. I like this guy. <laughs> um Thank you for your advice, John. Keep up the good work. Keep keep fish keeping. Absolutely. And it's always good to hear when somebody gets a bigger tank for their yellow labs because they're special and they deserve it. They deserve the biggest tank. Yes. African cichlids. And those are... <laughs> yeah. And they do the thing in the sand, too. Yeah. But, you know, they're fish. JBF became a new member. Welcome to the team. No. Yep. Jeff just... Welcome. Your JBF re-upped. Didn't become a member tonight. Uh, but still, thank you very much for that. Uh, and then followed it up with a super chat saying, people who make these complaints have never run a business in their life generally. You can never convince them, unfortunately. Wrong type of customer to pander to. I agree 1,000% JBF because uh, you're right. There are some people that are just never going to get it. And uh, you, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I mean, I can explain it all night long. And they're just not going to change. And it's fine. We love those people, too. They can be a pain, but we do what we got to do. Christopher Scott re-upped for 19 months. That's a whole lot of months. Awesome. Uh, Leon75, hello from Malaysia. Thanks for being one of the main YouTube channels that helped kickstart the aquarium hobby for me. Never gets old hearing that. Thank you, Leon. Isn't that where... The guy we got the driftwood from had mm -hmm. a had a video from somebody from Malaysia, a picture where they would send pictures of the wood. Yeah, and it was like the size of a house. And they, you know, like they would take a picture before they cut it down to send. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, that's nuts. <laughs> Rochelle Williams. Hi, John and Lisa. Hope you're doing well. Look how well we're doing. Other than the fact that we're not in the fish house right now. And no. I got to go clean up. All of the stuff from the live stream that we didn't use, but welcome to my world. But we're doing great. Space City Goldfish. I spent $1,000 on a rare goldfish. Even I was in shock. Mm. But see, Space City, that fish was worth it to you. And who knows if the fish store ripped you off. Uh, but he saw a diamond in the rough and said, that fish is worth a lot. And you came in and to you... You agreed. So therefore, he did not rip you off. 
You know, I've got a 2008 Dodge Ram right now that has 170,000 miles on it. I'll sell it to you right now for 45 grand. And if you're dumb enough to think that it's worth <laughs> that, I didn't rip you off. I mean, it's not worth that. It's worth about four. But if yeah, you but spend... Yeah, but you think it's worth 45 because I bought it for you. That's true, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, the value is determined by the person that's buying it. Mm -hmm. And if the person that's buying whatever it is that they're buying, if they are okay with that price, they're not getting ripped off. So I hope you love that $1,000 rare goldfish. And you know what? I would spend way more than that on an Asian arowana if it was available to me. Mm. Way more than that. And you want to know when I would consider the fish store would be ripping me off? Never, because I would never know. I would pay it. I'd be happy to pay it. And that's all there is to it. Because to me, that fish that Joey can go every day of the week and buy, that jerk, because they're <laughs> available for him, he probably wouldn't pay nearly that much. I'm sure they're still expensive where he's at, but probably. he can go get them anytime. To me, if I see one, I'm like, oh, that's a diamond in the rough. I've got to pick it up, whatever it costs, and just hope we got the money at that point and delay my buying a new truck even longer. But I would do it because I've wanted one of those fish my entire life. Sure. RG Reef. We're getting reefers. That's awesome. In our chat now. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Uh, thank you for that, R.G. Reef. When I said thank you, I was thanking Jake Adams, not R.G. Reef. But I'm also thanking R.G. Reef for being in here because we don't see too many saltwater people in here. So glad to have you. Oh, boy, another person who's changed his name. Aquatic Aquatics Idiots FKA Fistachio. That's way too long. It's, it's way too much for me to say. Uh, but well, it's Fistachio, right? I know. Okay. And he's a Breaking Benjamin fan, so he's all right by oh, me. okay. Watching all your videos, live streams help me get over my illness. Thank you for Breaking Benjamin talk uh, and stress-free environment. Keep it up. Fistachio, yesterday, I spent like two hours blowing leaves. It's February and it's already 70-something degrees and it's already time to start doing yard work. Uh, I was blowing leaves and I was listening to Breaking Benjamin Essentials on Apple Music the whole time. And it was beautiful. It was wonderful. It's not my fault I'm a big deal, John. Ha, huh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It's you're not a big deal. The fact that you can buy the fish for at all make that's a big deal. Not you. Don't get it twisted. I'm digging a hole here, and I, I'm probably not going to be able to get out of it. And then look at Whip's World. He says, well, you're not that big, Joey. I'm, this is a guy who's like six foot five. Yeah, <laughs> Whip, Whip is a giant, and, and Joey's not vertically. Not a giant. Joey's a big guy. I wouldn't want to fight him. Um, but he's not vertically big. Whip's World is... Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one now. Because I'm just getting in a, in a very bad place. <laughs> That's... Now, Joey, now you're... <laughs> Joey sees me falling off the edge and he's like, I'm going to make this guy fall. This is going to be fun to watch. I'm going to watch him just completely crumble. When you try to make jokes and they just don't work, it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Not your joke, Joey. My joke didn't work. But I'm trying here. What am I, Tom Segura or something? I mean, I'm not good at comedy. You know what? I just thought of something. And I, I have to say this because she's probably gone. I saw, I saw Lady Rorschach in here earlier. And I wanted to mention that it was really cool seeing her on Rico Stan's live stream yesterday i was lurking for a while and she was on there and lady rorschach is a really awesome lady She's super smart and it was really neat to just learn new things about her and, and see a face with the name and she's just a really nice lady and i i was her a gateway gateway to this oh well how about that <laughs> i learned that i thought that was really interesting so that's cool but yeah uh, Delisa Bradley had to leave, but I'm back now. We'll watch the replay immediately after. We had a nice long talk about a pretty pretty serious topic tonight. So, yeah, you're not going to want to miss that. You're going to want to go back for sure. Thank you for coming back and hanging out with us. 
Uh, Christian's Amazing Animals. Oh, that was the one from Kevin Ulri. Ulri? I'm sorry, Kevin. Probably botching that. I uh, wanted to say thanks for... Did, didn't I? I did address that, didn't I? Maybe I didn't. Love to say thanks for the plushy neighbor's daughter. Loved it. Aww. Awesome. That, that is, is so cool. That's perfect. Um, that's nice. And, and Christian's Amazing Animals paid a super chat to make sure we saw that. <gasps> yeah. Oh, because, and that's very cool. Because Kevin couldn't make the super chat for some reason. Christian, that was really nice of you to do that. Absolutely. People looking out for each other. That's awesome. Is a beautiful thing. And then Delisa Bradley came in again with a $20 super chat saying, oh. thank you for being you. Not me, the you. No, it's that, not me. It was you. you. No, it's definitely you. Yes. I smell good tonight. You do smell but good. it's you. <laughs> you smell great. You do. <laughs> I usually reek, but today it's... So yummy. It's that stuff. 1912. 1912. Luxurious bastard. I mean, it's not a bad word anymore, is it? Like, damn isn't a bad word anymore. I don't know. When got... I was a kid, I would get in trouble if I said damn. Uh, but now, you know, it's not it's not a bad word anymore. Um, oh, geez, look at this. Uh, Mem282825 said, keep it up with the pair working out. I like it. Uh, that's what I need to be doing with those dumbbells. RG Reef again, fish stores have a lot of overhead costs as well. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? RG Reef knows. And uh, if anybody knows, it's somebody that's in the reefing community. They know how expensive some of this stuff is. And, uh, you know, hey, it costs a lot of money to make money. So oh, yeah. cut the fish stores some slack. Christian's Amazing Animals decided that it wasn't enough to uh, super chat so that someone else can get their comment read. He wanted to uh, gift a membership, too. That's very cool. I don't know who the recipient of that was, but I'm sure they are very, very happy that you did that, Kristen. Just being all giving tonight. Nanners, hey there. Are there any good fish keeping podcasts that either of you know of? Wait, fish there keeping? has been a lot of podcasts that have come and gone. Mm. All the way back to the, uh, what was it? The, it was the Bailey Brothers uh, Joey did one. We did one. Uh, Corey did one. Um, Joey did one again. Uh, Randy Reed's podcast was awesome. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't think there's any currently right now. I, I don't know. There's some on shop. There's one on Shopify. And I really. It's Spotify, not Shopify. Whatever. <laughs> A pop little of Stop. <laughs> Stop making fun of me. Jeez. I have feelings, too. <laughs> Learn um, how to say the word. I won't make fun of you anymore. Oh, wait. It's not plants. Duh. Automatically with the plants. All right. Well, I'm going to do some more of this. Jennifer Anderson, we are loving the new discus food. See? There you go. And it's not made from discus, either. It's made and from it other things. It smells great. And Lisa likes to taste it. It's yummy. Okay. There is a podcast that I was listening to um, last week. I like... All of them except their beta one. Um, <laughs> but I really like them. They're easy to listen to. They're educated. Believe it, they have a store. But I really, really liked them. They're on Spotify. Watercolors Aquarium. If I'm not mistaken, it's Watercolors. Right? Oh, yep. That's the one because there's just don't watch... Don't listen to episode 15. Um, <laughs> it's Watercolors, the podcast on uh, Spotify. So I liked it. They sound really good. There's but an Asian arowana, too, in fact, at the fish store by my house. You know, I mean, I've had people say that they can get them for me. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't know what would happen. I mean, let's be real. Do, is is some government agency going to come here and take my fish from me? I mean, let's be real. I don't see that happening. Uh, I would hate to be the one that that happens to. But having been somebody that was in law enforcement in, in my lifetime, I would hate being the cop that had to do that. Um, sir, we have to arrest you because you have a fish that you're not supposed to import. 
I mean, I would and hate to be that guy. What do they do with the fish? That's a good question. Are they going to take care of that fish? They'd probably take it home and be like, look, I got an Asian marijuana. Finally, I've wanted one for 30 years. I, I mean, I, I'm i sure there's some out there. Like I said, I've had people. I, there's like underground things. That you, but I, I'm not going to do it. I mean, I just want to wait till they're real and so I can show them on YouTube and be cool like Joey, you know, because he's the only thing. That makes Jimmy, 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 Joey cooler than me is not that he has five times as many subscribers as we do and makes more money than me and is in better shape than me. And it, 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 no, it's none of that. The only thing that makes Joey cooler than me is the fact that he has an Asian marijuana. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else. Mm. So I would love to have one. And maybe someday I will. I would love to see one. Can you stop doing that with the knife? Gosh, we're definitely getting cute. Shed Aquarium had one, but it looked bad. It looked really bad. And it was like hiding back in the corner. It looked like something like... I it, I didn't like it. I was like, well, I'm not going to count that as seeing one because it just it didn't look right. No. It looked like it wanted to go back to Asia. <laughs> uh, Leo 209 again. When are you guys getting more of Space Echo 300? Setting up a 60 breeder for my pea puffer. See... <gasps> No, he said puffer fish. Not everybody owns oh. pea puffers. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm not trying to be that guy, okay? Oh, gosh. Here we go. I'm not trying to be that guy, but Space Echoes, Jay Wilson will tell you this, used to sit on the shelves. I did a video about it, mm. and now they're selling well, yeah. which makes them difficult for me to get, uh, for anybody to get. So when I get them, it's a big deal, and uh, I should have some next week. We got some in last Friday. They were sold out by Monday. Yep. So, you know, it sucks, but we get them as, whenever we can get them, that's when we get them. Um, we had the same problem with the sharks, but the thing is, there was thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of sharks out there. With the space echoes, there it's not a, it's not, you know, the market isn't flooded with them like they were with the sharks. So they're harder to come by, and uh, so I can when I get them, that's when I get them. I, I wish I could tell you a date, but hopefully, it'll be next week. Wait, oh, you have to read. That's a great comment. That's a great that one. It's the best one. Oh, Joey, you are doing a good job tonight. This guy, I've known Joey since like 2012. And I don't know why I just said that because it's not like it makes me cooler. But, uh, but he's, he's, yeah, he's doing a really good job tonight. Uh, you have Lisa, though, so you have that going for you. After I was talking about how much cooler Joey is than me. Oh, listen, you guys. You want to talk about how cool I am? She can drop the microphone. That literally mic drop moment right there. <laughs> so I got John a card. See, it says John. <laughs> it says John. It does say John on there. You got to move it the other way. Okay. So, yeah. You can't okay. read it. It's so small. <laughs> so I got him this card because, what day was it? Wednesday? I don't know. We had our 14-year anniversary of our first date. Like, we still celebrate that day because we waited like that was the day we met not our first yeah, date whatever but that's the day that we celebrate because the the marriage one you know the gotcha day which was like two years ago it just it'd be weird to celebrate that it'd be like we only been together two years so so i got him this card and it's really mushy and it says it's nine fifty. we do we have to do this oh no, okay, go ahead. it's super sweet though. Go ahead. I married a good man. She did. Listen a, to the Joey. Listen. A, a man who says and does all the big and little things to make me feel beautiful, loved, and appreciated. A man who gets me, which isn't always easy. Mm -mm. Why I got my sticker? Jimmy knows. And brings out the best in me better than anyone. A man who lightens my moods and makes my days easier and my life sweeter in every way possible. You are a good man, an amazing husband, and I love you with all my heart. 
There you go. There you go, Joey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've made myself look so bad tonight, and you've made yourself look so good. Good job. Oh, thanks. We've made you and Joey look really good tonight. <laughs> That's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Brent Dean became a member. Welcome to the team, Brent. The Zen Ginger. I'm not going to read yours <gasps> oh, because you're yeah, just being mean to me now. What do you want? Oh, yeah. And, I think uh, we do need a new something for people over. But haven't we? I've been saying that for the longest time. Yeah. And I, and it just, I don't know why it just never happens. I, I want it to happen, but you it know, just doesn't. You know, we should just do a poop emoji. I like that idea. Why don't you mm. set that up? Okay. Finn Sanity Aquatics. John, KG Tropicals, carrying LB Beard Oils soon. Sounds like it. I I would like to, especially this this brand, because it's amazing. And uh, and I, I love, you know, the guy that owns this brand, uh, Luxurious Bastard, is a, it's a small business like us. It's like a one or two person operation. He makes it all himself. He packs all the orders himself. I really, really, really like that. Because that's what we do. And uh, so I, I felt a connection there, even though I've never met this guy before. Nothing about him. I don't know anything about him other than that he has a glorious beard. And um, and his name's Dave. And uh, I'm going to shout him out because all of the scents that I got are like no other I've ever smelled. I mean, they're, they're just absolutely amazing. If you're wondering... The Bilberry Bastard. All the names are Bastard. They end in Bastard. And it's fun to say Bastard. So, Bilberry Bastard. Uh, 1912. I can't describe what any of these smell like because they're just unbelievable. Uh, the Chakra Bastard. C-H. Joey just threw up in his mouth. And uh, <laughs> Luxurious Bastard. Luxurious scent. And that, I think, is my favorite. I'm wearing this tomorrow. It's got a lot of vanilla it? in it. It's got vanilla in it. Oh, it smells so good. It's amazing. Amazing. Dave from Luxurious Bastard. You are a luxurious bastard, you. Uh, <laughs> how many times can he say that word in one stream? But I won't be carrying it because beard oil, beard balm? Nah. I'll just buy it. Just go buy it from him. Wisworld. Hey, John. Hi, Lisa. I have nothing. I'm just feeling saucy tonight. Just take my money. And but a slice of pizza for me. Yeah, tonight was pizza night. That's why I'm in such a good mood. Because uh, I love pizza night. Yes, he loves pizza night. Basic Steel Bob gifted 10 memberships. Good grief. Oh, wow. Thank you. That probably has us over the 600 mark for members. Can you believe that? That's Whoa. absolutely nuts that all of you have taken that to this level. That's ridiculous. Thank you so much for that. Uh, basic Steel Bob, you are the man, Bob. Bob. This is Bob. Bob. Bob has, I can't say it. Bob. It's 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to say it. Uh-oh, what are you saying? It, it's not terrible. And if you've seen this movie, you've heard this, and you laughed too. This is Bob. Bob has bitch tits. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. We're so demonetized. <laughs> that's not a that's not demonetized territory there. I don't know. Uh, if they you, add it all up. <laughs> if you know that movie, put it in the chat. I guarantee you somebody already has. Uh, but we've got like a fifteen second delay here. Um, Judy Basco, why are red cauliflower and red tuxedo hyphen swordtail fishes cost three hundred dollars? What? So the thing is, uh, I never heard of that. A fish, a, an expensive fish, mm. is going to be due to their rarity and their rarity, and also how rare they are. Adam got it. Adam Worley got Fight Club, and then right after that, uh, let's see, Stacy Wilson got it. Yeah, y'all are Fight Club fans. If you haven't seen Fight Club, you're just doing this life thing wrong. I'm sorry. That's a, that's an amazing movie. Um, not Ed Norton's best movie, but probably um, Brad Pitt's best movie. Christian's Amazing Animals do a flip. <laughs> that's not happening. 
Um, I would be probably uh, in the hospital for at least three weeks if I was to do that. You definitely don't want to see it. And you may be saying that as a skateboarding reference, do a kickflip kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't be able to do that either. Again, I would end up in the hospital. Rule number one, you don't talk about Tank Talk Live. That's what this used to be called. Oh. And then didn't somebody else decide to use the name Tank Talk? I don't know. Mm. If this wasn't my favorite channel before tonight, it sure is now. <laughs> oh. Maybe we should just impede into uh, Chattanooga Ed's time even more often. Wait, is he on? I, I don't know. I don't know if he's on it or not. Maybe you should uh, check that real quick for us. I'm the biggest fight club in the... I'm the biggest fight club in the world. What did I miss? Maybe fight club fan is what you meant? I was talking about the This is Bob introduction. Um, that means I gotta click Which it. was... No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, Ed knows I have no control. I, I just oh, keep see. going. Oh, no, that's us. Um, yeah, we're live right now. Sure. Trisha Cotton, can't wait to see the plants I bought. Love y'all. We can't wait to send them to you. Uh, we've got some bangers oh. in right now. That is awesome. uh, Usually tonight is the night, or, or Thursday nights is when the new Tropica list comes out. And listen, folks, when you're going on our site and you see that, like, you really want the Anubius Nana or you want the Bisophilandra Ketagang or, or the Wavy Greens and we don't have them, it's not because I've been lazy and I just haven't ordered them. It's because they ain't got them to send us. Yeah. Because the response that you all have had has already been so overwhelming. We're cleaning them out. I mean, the Bisophilandra, we could not keep it in the tanks. I've got five right now that they 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 were do they were a little rough and I'm nursing them back to health and they'll be fine they'll be sellable probably in the next few weeks but uh, you know at the moment they're not sellable but uh, we just haven't been able to get them because we cleaned them out we bought every single one of them that we had that they had but the good thing is and this is something I want you to pay attention to uh, a great example is the Bucephalandra. I know that a lot of people say it differently, but I always say Bucephalandra. Some people say Bucephalandra. George Farmer says Bucephalandra. I, I, who knows how you say it? But um, we don't have that in pots right now, but we have it in tissue culture. Mm -hmm. So always, 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 if you go on our site and you're looking for pots, which is what I prefer to, I love the tissue cultures. Um, but if you're looking for potted plants and we don't have it, always go to the tissue culture section because we might have it there. They're sometimes cheaper and you actually get more plants in that little cup. They're a little smaller, but you get more of them. So be aware I of that. I, I love all of them because they just, they grow very well in my tanks. So. And Bucephalandra, the, the Ketagangs are so cool. I, mm. I love, I love that plant. It just doesn't look like any other plant and I love them we got them in tissue cultures if you want them right now uh, and Jake Adams swore that he was the first person to successfully propagate that plant in the United States hmm. and you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue with him because I don't know if he tells me he was then cool that makes him even more special to me um, there's several different varieties, so maybe it was one particular variety that he was the first to... I don't know. But just another cool little backstory on those fish. Adam Schoenwald... You mean plants? And that plants. Yeah, plants. I do that all the time. Adam Schoenwald gifted five memberships because he's like, I forgot to, vi to do what I do every week in here it's today. So nice. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Every week there's people that get uh, memberships from that man mm -hmm. every week. Tissue culture doesn't melt back. I mean, listen, every plant known to man has the opportunity to melt back. Uh, now, one of the biggest reasons why we fell in love with Tropica a year and a half ago and started working this deal with them was because they didn't melt back for us. That doesn't mean they're not going to ever for anybody, but they didn't melt back for us, and they were the only ones that didn't. So, yeah. um, But, you know, things happen, and what are you going to do? Raul C., uh, pretty sure shares a last name with another person uh, that is in this chat right now oh. and uh, has ordered from us multiple times. I am 
merely guessing, we have a Raul customer with the last name starts with a C that has orders from us multiple times and has now become a member. If you are the same, welcome and thank you. If you're not the same, welcome, welcome and thank you thank too. You anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff H. pooped on us. Because that's what Jeff H. does. I saw Ellen in here earlier too. And he's proud of it. When he poops on us, he's proud of it. He's done it in person too. Yeah. Literally. Literally. And the bobblehead is right there to prove it. Yeah. I love Jeff, Jeff and Ellen. Victor Claudio, John's a real Joker tonight. Probably one of the best movies ever made. Oh. Just saying. The Joker? Oh. And part two will be probably one of the second best movies ever made. Because, I mean, of course. Fight Club, Brad Pitt's best movie. Absolutely. I mean, Inglorious Bastards was pretty daggone good. Uh, I got a lot of movies that I'm a big fan of. I love Moneyball. I love Fury. There's a lot of movies that Brad Pitt's done that I'm a big fan of. Um, mm. But I would agree. Tyler Durden is one of the best characters like that's the ever been in a movie, ever. The, the vampire one. I wasn't a fan of that. I loved it. I wasn't a fan of that movie. I liked it. Um, but yeah, Tyler Durden. I, my my name on video games for the longest time was Tyler Durden. I would always name myself Tyler Durden on everything. So yeah, I agree. Great movie. I don't know if it's if it's his best because he's just got so many good ones. All right, we got to go through this speed round because it's already ten oh two. Charlotte Adams as a member for twenty five months. Have a good night, John and Lisa. Time to finish up. Water changes. Ooh. Good topic tonight. Ooh, Thank you for hanging out. Fish. Yeah, Daniel Garcia with the ninety nine cents or. Danny All, I, yeah, I, I know I said Ooh, your name wrong there, cool, sorry. I like that. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Jeff H. came in again. Howdy fish people, better late than not at all. Jack the Beta is doing awesome. Thanks again, Hey, Lisa. that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Christian's Amazing Animals gifted another membership. Aww. Yet another lucky person that is going to get all the behind the scenes stuff when we do it. I had a little thank bit you, of a Christian. back injury last week and was, I mean, I've been promising this video to members for the longest time. I haven't been able to do it because I was barely able to walk for a few days, but I'm going to get it. And thanks to Christian's Amazing Animals, two people tonight are going to get to see it that otherwise wouldn't have been able to see it. Mm. Ultimate new Noob for 200 of whatever currency that is. I don't particularly care. Thank you so much for it. I have a newly cycled tank, and when I did a 20% water change yesterday and added a bit of Seachem Clarity yesterday, it clouded the water. It's still cloudy 24 hours later. Help, please. So probably what's going on there is an algae bloom. It could be an algae bloom from ammonia. If you've got high ammonia in the tank, I would definitely check your ammonia. More than likely, that ammonia or the, the cloudiness is from ammonia and bacteria is building up and all that kind of stuff. It's not something to panic over yet. Uh, hopefully, I mean, if you have fish in there, using things like Prime and stuff like that to help get through it. Prime Complete, that's going to be better choice for you right now than uh, Seachem Clarity. Seachem Prime or Fritz Complete gets you through it. And then uh, Thelma and Louise was Brad Pitt's best movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie, whatever. <laughs> you just liked it because he had his shirt off a lot in that movie. Well, he had his shirt off a lot in Fight Club too. Almost every man is like, what's the perfect body? Brad Pitt Fight Club. Everybody says that. I mean, everybody I've never knows watched that. it. I wouldn't know. You'd be a Brad, big Brad Pitt fan if you did, because he's great. Tyler Durden, best character ever. I mean, he's okay, but... I don't think Brad Pitt gets the credit he deserves. I think he's not only a beautiful man, but he, I think he's a great actor. And I'll say it to your face. I don't care. Say to your face, too. You're a Leonardo DiCaprio fan. Yeah. Blech. Because he's great. Blech. Would you all straighten her out, please? I, I I just vomited a little bit in my mouth. Whatever. Swallow it and shut up. <laughs> Whips World for the, for the, at the end, back, oh, here we go. This is the lyric and it's going to piss me off. Back over time, we were all trying for free. You met the Purpose and me purpose? Is that how you spell purpose? Porpoise? Huh? You met the porpoise and me? Uh-huh. <laughs> no right, no wrong. He You're said, selling a song. Just have John skip my super chat. <laughs> what in the name of Bob's bitch tits was that? I've never read such weird gibberish 
in my life. <laughs> Whip, you got to stop drinking so early, man. Jeez, what is happening tonight? I, I don't know what that is. I can't decipher that. Uh, no right, no wrong. You're selling a song, a name, whisper game. Yep. It's not in here. I don't know it. Uh, you got me on that one. Text me later and what let me know. What porpoise? A porpoise? Por porpoise? Is it porpoise? That sounds like a, a nine-year-old or four-year-old <laughs> trying to say porpoise. Or a one-year-old saying apocalypse. That's what that looks like right there. Anyway, folks, listen. It's uh, We have gone way too long tonight. 10.06 our time. Leonardo DiCaprio is amazing according to... Fishtachio, and he knows. Obviously, he's got good taste with his taste in music and everything else. So, you know, uh, he knows. He knows what he's talking about. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to her because Me? if I don't, to say goodbye to everybody. Because if I don't, we're going to be here all night. Oh so I'll God. smell my new beard oil scents. <laughs> Luxurious. Yes, and it all smells really good. If you go to Luxurious Bastard and order. Uh, oh beard gosh. products put in the comment John from KG Tropical sent you he doesn't know <laughs> me but I want him to know that oh my gosh you're so silly anyway we gotta go back outside to the fish house clean up your mess and feed a whole lot of fish and cats all over the property so you're not gonna help me clean up my mess and you know it because it's probably gonna take me 45 minutes to feed the fish and the cat so it'll take you 10 minutes to clean up your mess anyway so we better go. <laughs> it was a lot of fun and I thank you, Maude. You guys are awesome. And thank you to everybody who has just been lurking and chatting along with us. The people that super chatted and becoming members and gifting memberships. Thank you guys. It's been so much fun. And hopefully we'll be here next week. We're not demonetized or canceled or anything. <laughs> um if not, you can find me uh, on Facebook, Tank Talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.